Well, now we've had the main presentations, and now everyone is, all four panellists, before you get to vote, are now allowed to have two minutes in which they can restate their case, or up to two minutes, taking on board things that other people have said and possibly being a little critical of other people's ideas. Ian, you can start as you started before. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Rosie. Well, if I were smart and tactical, I think I would use my two minutes to criticise uh, Malcolm Law and Paul Chewy so that, uh, with luck, it would leave me in the balloon with Campbell of the Scotch Whiskey Association, and then I could hopefully deliver the killer blow later. <laughs> but I never was tactical. <laughs> So, uh, and, and I must say, I always love the logic that comes uh, in these debates from industry that uh, it's possible to find a country where alcohol is cheaper and they have less problems, and therefore it can't be anything to do with price. There are also strong hints of that, what I call the industry paradigm and the, and the uh, public health paradigm. The, the industry paradigm is that uh, alcohol is a normal product, uh, but unfortunately some people misuse it and therefore the problem is to target those miscreants. Whereas the public health uh, uh, paradigm is that alcohol is not an ordinary commodity like soap powder that should be discounted in stores. Uh, it is part of a society, we're not to get, trying to get rid of it, but it is something that has to be dealt with differently. It can't just be left to the, to the, to the marketplace uh, it's a psychoactive substance of addiction, and the, problem, and the solution to the problem is to try to make the environment less alcogenic, less conducive, so that people can drink, but there aren't those 24-7 pressures on them to misuse the product. I support uh, Paul in the fact that we must continue to look at education and information. The sad fact is, so far, we have not found the tools to, uh, to, to, to change behavior, to get at children. I'm sure there are ways that we can do it, using more peer support and so on. But until we do that, I'm afraid we have to fall back on the evidence base of the population-based approach, the public health approach of price, availability, and marketing. Thank you. Thanks very much, Ian. So now, um, Malcolm, do you want to um, say, carry on, make your case again, or rebut all the other cases? Um, a few words on uh, taxing alcohol. Uh, from the smoking analogy, I think there's no doubt that if the tax on alcohol was steeply increased, we'd there'd be less alcohol sold. But it would be a very popular, unpopular measure, and I like to do things that have the support of the population. The reason I don't agree with this is that I did a while ago spend time looking at all the medical evidence on alcohol, and I did convince myself, having been unfamiliar with the evidence before, that alcohol does protect against heart disease and stroke in moderation. And I'm also convinced that large numbers of people enjoy drinking alcohol, it's um, inappropriate to dismiss it as a rather dirty, smelly habit like smoking is. The two are not comparable there. If um, a young teenager can probably get drunk on, on five pounds, because alcohol is so cheap, if we put the price up to 10 pounds, he'd probably still scrounge that from somewhere. A married couple who like to have, I'm very old fashioned sounding here, a couple who like to have um, a bottle of wine with their meal every night are already paying 60 pounds a week for half decent wine. If we double that to 120 pounds, we're taking a pleasure away from them because they won't be able to afford it. I don't think it's reasonable to do that, and I think that's the reason why it wouldn't get the support of the majority of the population. We'd also get these men in white vans going over to Calais and coming back with um, unimaginable amounts of alcohol from French supermarkets for their own consumption, of course. I would strongly support measures, for example, to take away the huge displays of alcohol that supermarkets have as soon as you walk in with a third off um, cheap booze. And I would like to see supermarkets um, discounting alternative products like soap powder or chicken, and I don't think the general public are going to mind in the slightest if that happens. I think they would support it, that everyone likes a bargain, but we don't mind where that is. You've had your two minutes. You've got, you can have one second more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you have a final point you want to make. I couldn't make it in one second. All right, you've got five. 
<laughs> no, no, I've, I've had my say. Okay. I went over time before. <laughs> well, not, not too badly, but no, it was very good. Right, um, drinks industry, how are you going to... It didn't seem to me you got a lot of support from anybody for your point of view. I believe I've got, uh, pl <laughs> I believe I've got plenty of support because what yeah. I heard Malcolm say was that the power of the majority were with the lady on the tube. Um, I heard him say that uh, we should use more legislation and I certainly agree with that because stopping people drinking uh, when they're drunk is against the law and we should apply the legislation. I heard Paul talk about education and building on the good work that uh, under 15s and other young people are drinking less. So I think there is, uh, there is a, a swell of working together. And unfortunately, Don Schenker has left, but they've just published some principles they wish to put out, which is that everybody should have a life free from harm that we should protect young people from heart, from alcohol uh, getting into lives in too great a way, that we should have balanced information, and that we should support problem drinkers, which I heard Ian Gilmore talk about through brief intervention. So I think that there is a groundswell of support for everything I said, both on the panel and beyond that. I do worry about this uh, headlong rush to promote minimum pricing at the expense of everything else. It's been ruled illegal for 30 years and people who support the policy even say that the government uh, has very little chance of persuading the European court that it will survive any challenge. So to pin one's hopes onto that rather than moving to work together to the desired outcome that we want, I think is missing a trick. So I see a great deal of support. I see people inside and outside this room saying it's time we move together. Okay, thank you very much. Well in time, anyway. Paul, finally. Uh, yeah. Um, well, I, I guess like Ian, I think I think it would uh, I think it would be a great shame to lose Malcolm in the final because I think it could be a good face-off regardless of who he faces should he make the final because um, that of course is down to the audience. But I, I don't think we can make this analogy with with smoking and drinking because you know as was said we do have a a love affair with alcohol it was very very different to smoking and I think you know just just the pricing issue clearly worked with smoking I'm skeptical about whether it actually can work with alcohol simply because of our relationship with it having said that there's no way I'm going to go out and have 10 pound bottles of wine every night with my meal as one of my uh, colleagues seemed to suggest um, uh, earlier no I think this bo the bottom line things is we can we can look around us and we can look around and talk about you know uh, we've got to price it up um, we've got to uh, look at where we advertise, we can't stick this poster outside of school, we can't do this, we can't do that. I come back to my original point, we've got to look at ourselves and we've got to look about our own behaviour if we want to enjoy alcohol in a responsible way and make sure that children are protected from it and only start drinking when the, it is the right time to do so, should they choose to do so. It's about protecting them early on through interventions, and those interventions, just to pick up, when we'd heard, I think, I think it was Ian uh, uh, who, who said, you know, you know, if, if we, if we, you know, we've not found the, the tools. Well, well, we have found the tools. Preventure is a fantastic evidence-based program that's been done all over the world that shows a 30% reduction in young people's uh, onset of taking on alcohol. Uh, and it's there, and I've been trying to get it funded to bring to schools in the UK for the last year and a half with Mentor, and nobody wants to listen to it. So the will is there. There are other well-known prevention activities which you can use in schools very simply that don't even talk about drugs or alcohol. It's about behaviour. It's about getting kids to look at their own aspirations and values so they actually make a, a common you know, decision and say, fine, a 10-year-old can look at a 15-year-old who's, who's drunk and say that's stupid, but by the time they're 15, they'll be doing it because of the peer influences that are around them. We have to tackle the behaviour of those young people and it begins with us. Thank, thank you all very much um, and for all four presentations.